Um, I think my first experiences I remember of listening to music were really from my father's record collection, which I'm sure so many people do the same thing. Listening to the Beatles, Sgt. Peppers, uh, which is funny enough because I'm like, I'm like Sgt. Very Peppers. Very Sgt. Pepper. I'm Sgt. Pepper's <laughs> evil twin uh, tonight. Um, Sergeant With the walrus, right? Yeah. Well, apparently the walrus is Paul, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what that means I am. Um, but yeah, the, the Eagles, uh, were, you know, I listened to, listen to that a lot as well in the back of the car when my dad was driving. And it's, it's not lost on me that how wonderful it is to be in this position, kind of representing that kind of music. Um, but I think when I was 14, I remember my dad told me, I, I walked into the front, front room and said, it's all right, don't have to worry, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a rock star. And I left the room not knowing that there was a minor meltdown going on in the living room. Um, they later said, you know, they came to an agreement which was, look, if you go to university and you get your degree, we'll, we'll back you in whatever you do. And I've got to say, like, I called their bluff. Uh, and you know, I'm sure they were cursing, cursing the deal that they made. Um, but they held true, you know. And although my mum is not here anymore, um, my father's been very supportive, and uh, and you know, called me straight after the show from the UK just to say, you know, he stayed up to watch it. So. So they're giving you lots of support. Lots of support, and I really couldn't ask. I really couldn't ask for anything more than that. My, my, my mother and father were really faithful to everything they said about it. You know, they just wanted the best for me and me to chase my dream. And here I am. So do you have any brothers and sisters? I've got one sister back in Scotland. Does she sing also? Uh, yeah, you know, she's got a great voice. Yeah. So uh, any chance for a duet at some point? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to ask her. I've got to say though, my dad's actually from Belfast, Northern Ireland. So whenever I go across to Ireland, it's like singing's not a big deal. Everybody sings. Everyone's got a great voice. It's like, you know, you can come in and say, I'll sing a song. We're like, no, no, shut up. Let's let somebody else have a word. So, you know, I probably wouldn't get a word in anyways. And does your accent change? Um, I'll probably get a little more Irish. Because yeah. uh, I had two accents in my household growing up. Right. Um, no, but proud Scott. Very pr also very proud of my Irish roots. And now, uh, you've to toured with some really great bands in the past. Yeah. One of my favorite, Charlatans UK. Yeah, I played with the Charlatans. Love them. I played a great show with the Charlatans. That was a great experience. Yeah. Tim Burgess, uh, the singer, you know, he, he was very, very supportive of us. We met him in Los Angeles here, he lived in, kind of in the neighborhood. And then when we went back to the UK, he asked us to support him. And uh, I got, that, was, that was a real like hero moment. Like, oh my God, the Charlottes want us to play with them. That's so great. Yeah, that's, we really did feel like rock stars when that happened. And, and that was only one of many, many great experiences I got to get, you know, partake in with, with Drive Line. Well, and how is it feeling now? Because you get to be up front and be, and you're on your own. Yeah. So how does it feel to be kind of just out there carrying it by yourself. It's, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange yeah. feeling. I never, you know, when I came to the states, uh, Ron Fair, who was out, who was on the, the show tonight, talk, you know, he was the mentor for some of the other coaches. He was the man that actually brought me to America, brought the band to America. He signed us to A and M Records and then took us to Geffen. Um, and frankly, you know, I think back to when he took us over here. I couldn't have imagined this. I mean, really, I just couldn't. I couldn't have imagined half the things we did, let alone that the band break. Up and then I'd be standing here on a red carpet after performing on The Voice. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to be surprised by anything anymore because there's more left right turns than a maze. So. And now, Blake had kind of an interesting comment about how when you're walking around, you're looking for your band. Yeah. Do you feel that at all, that you really want the band to connect with? Or do you feel like now you're kind of more confident in just going your own? I think I'm getting more used to it. I think I'm getting more used to, to uh, kind of just taking that yourself, taking it by the reins. But I do have to say that... I'm much more used to that connection with the band because there is a plateau that you kind of reach when you're so well trained with uh, with a group of guys where you really are almost telepathic. And that's a great feeling. You feel like a part of a very, very powerful unit and you can just take, tear up a stage. So it's a new experience to do it on my own, but I'm, I'm getting into it. I've got to say, it's a, lot, it's, it's a lot of fun. And there's always a possibility of another band. There is, and I'm not going to rule that out because you know a few people have spoken to me and I know that I love that dynamic, so it may very well be that that's where I go, or maybe it'll be solo, I don't know. You can be like the next Daughtry. Could be, yeah. <laughs> you know what, even Daughtry's got a band. Yeah, so. and it's a band with his name. That's right. <laughs> we'll just call it Terry. That's right. <laughs>